Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Nick Talks. This episode's regular guest, I'm keep, I won't call him a returning guest, let's call him a regular guest now, is Ash from Preston Journalist. Um, first of all, Ash, how's it going with your new account since you got hacked and everything went tits up and you're trying to get all your subscribers back? How's it going? It's going slowly but surely, thank you. Yeah, with everyone's help, it is getting there slowly. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back firing all cylinders as soon as we can, but still getting the content out there. And that's the main thing to me. I'm sure to you as well. It's it's not always, it's not really about the money as such. It's about talking about this stuff and getting it out there. And that's why I started doing it in the first place. So that's the main thing. Good. Well, anyone watching this video, go into the description. You'll find a link to Ash's YouTube channel. Click it, subscribe. He used to have 43,000 subscribers, but he got hacked. And now he's, he's trying to rebuild it again. So uh, let's support him. Let's subscribe and watch his content, which is really good, especially if you're into politics. Um, and if you're into politics, that's why you're watching this. So you'll definitely enjoy Ash's channel as well. Right, let's jump into what's been going on. How's Starmer doing? Could be going better, couldn't it? <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's currently left the country, hasn't he? He's, he's leaving the country at some point. I mean, He's got a, with a small visit with uh, Prince Charles, King Charles even. It, um, it seems to me that he's spending more time out of the country these days than he is actually in it. I mean, when's the last time you saw the guy go out and meet a voter in the street? He, he doesn't do any public appearances, really, does he? I've not seen anything since he was booed at the races. Yeah, that's there. I'm going to say Doncaster races. I think that was the last one, yeah, when he was jeered and booed. It, I mean, it's humiliating for politicians to go out and be jeered like jeered at like that. Anyway, when everyone's got phones these days, so it gets you can't hide it. It just happens, doesn't it? But what was worse about that Doncaster race is, if you remember, Farage was literally around the other side of the race course, being followed by people and cheered, and asked people asking for selfies with him, which made it twice as bad for him. But yeah, I mean, this guy in the cabinet as well. You know, they, they're all of them. They, they're not going out and doing public appearances. They're, they're refusing to appear on what you call centre-right news outlets like Talk TV and GB News and that, they're refusing to appear on any of them. The, they're really on the back foot. And after, you know, just over 100 days, it's that's terrible. And you've got the nightmare Halloween budget coming up at the end of this month. How, how do you think that's going to go? I think there's two ways that can go. They're either going to reduce everything they were going to do because they're so unpopular and make it a, a beige um budget well, that that contains nothing really more the status quo or do you think they're still going to implement their drastic budget what do you think they're going to do because i'm not sure how can they turn around now and possibly say actually we're not going to increase you know allegedly 40 billion pounds worth of taxes we're not going to do that because they've done nothing but spin that yarn since they got elected saying oh we found a 22 billion black hole I'll, I'll tell you how they'll do that. They'll do that by saying there is a black hole and we're looking at cost savings. We're going to grow the economy. And what we decided is the taxpayer, the working people should not have to fill that black hole that was left by the Tory party. So we're here protecting you like we said we were going to do. So people have said that we're going to make you pay and we're deciding now in a budget, it's not fair that you should pay and fill this hole. That's how they'd spin that. All right, that could work. It, well, it could work. But then if you see the, some of the latest stories that are coming out about this budget where they're going to increase the taxation on employers' pension contributions for, them, for their employees. So, but they're going to exempt public sector workers, including, no, no, no shock, including themselves, of course, politicians, government ministers, civil servants, NHS workers, etc. But they're going to tax the ass out of the private sector again. I mean, yeah, what you've just said makes a lot of sense. They could spin it like that. But when Rachel Reed has been so on the ball about this, I mean, they don't want to say it anymore now. They don't want to come out with this 22 billion figure because it's essentially crap. But they, they've they been saying it that much now. And then Rachel Reed's made it worse, I think, a couple of weeks ago when she came out and said, we're going to have to find over 100 billion in the next four years. But then you've got the Treasury that will not answer freedom of information requests and a breakdown for this black hole. So essentially, it's been proven to be a lie because if it really was there, they'd have said by now, wouldn't they? They'd have given a breakdown of that black hole. And I don't, I don't see how they can't raise taxes. 
they've, they're sending 12 billion abroad for, in my opinion, climate rubbish to other countries. They, they've given out at least 14 billion pounds in pay rises to public sector with more strikes on the way. But they've borrowed 6.7 billion more than what the OBR predicted, the Office of Budget Responsibility predicted, and they've borrowed 1.2 billion more this month than they did than the Tories did this time last year. I, I just don't see how they can possibly carry on with the money they're spending, yet telling us we're skint. You can't have the t- you can't have the two. I think you're right. I think if they this twenty two million black twenty two million billion black hole, if that existed and they knew where that money went, they would be on the news all the time explaining it penny for penny about how the Tories wasted it, how the Tories did this, how the Tories did that, and they would be stacking it all up in a column, then adding it up and going, showing you twenty two billion. But because they won't go into it, we know they're just lying and making stuff up. We've seen, I mean, it's very minimal. We we have seen green, small green shoots of growth in the economy. And now the forecasts are actually being downplayed because of the decisions made by Reeves and this Labour government. Because obviously they've spread a lot of fear into the markets. Nobody wants to invest in Britain at the moment. So... The, the money that they anticipated they'd be able to get through certain bits of growth or employees or taxi non-doms, et cetera, that's all gone. VAT on private schools, they're going to end up paying it all out and more because, of, because they're now all claiming back uh, the VAT for the last decade, which you're allowed to do, for any capital projects they've completed. So everything they've come up with has backfired on them. They're not going to make a penny out of anything they've come up with so far. And it's because they they only think like six formers debating socialism at a college. They think, oh, let's tax the rich people. We'll get more money. We can help the poor people. But what they fail to realise is actions have consequences. Rich people have lots of options. Rich people also have very clever accountants. Rich people can move their money around the world now. They can move themselves around the world so much easier than ever before. And the they, they just don't comprehend that. They just see simple two plus two is four. You know, if I earn more than 52 grand, I end up paying 40% tax. I think it's 40, yeah, it's 40%, isn't it? I end up paying 40% tax. I've, I know I've had this point before on your show. I'd like to know how Starmer made £404 in a year, £404,000 in a year, his parliamentary salary plus leader of the opposition plus doing legal work on the side and only paid 99 grand in tax, which is less than 25%. I'd like to know how Rishi Sunak paid the same level of tax. Nobody is talking about this in the media. But if I don't that sort of money, when you earn over 20, 125 grand, is it? When you earn over that, you pay even more tax. Is it something like 45% tax rate, tax rate something like that? Top rate, yeah. How, yeah, so how are these people not paying that? That's because they have very clever accountants. So, yeah, but they shouldn't be allowed to, should they? Because they're telling me and you yep. that if you earn so much, you're going to pay a ridiculous amount of tax and they're earning 10, 20, 30 times more than what me or you would ever earn. Yeah, it's the hypocrisy. Than, me, me, certainly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the hypocrisy, isn't it? It's always, that's what always annoys the public. In this country, we normally don't hate rich people for being rich. We normally, we normally say to ourselves, Well done them, especially if they're self-made. Well done them. They did things I didn't do. They took chances that I didn't do. But I'd like to be them. So I don't want to punish them for being successful and rich because I wish I was successful and rich or I want my children to be successful and rich. But socialists are not like that. So we think socialists care about poor people. They don't. They just hate rich people. It's like the irony that they're, they're all quite wealthy themselves, aren't they? Starmer's rumoured to be worth, what, 10, 12 million quid. It's unconfirmed rumours that he owns a huge plot of land in Surrey as well. Now, I can't confirm that, I, but I've, it's just a rumour that I've heard. He's got a two billion, a two million, sorry, pound house. He, this guy's mega, this guy's mega wealthy, yet pretends to be a man of the people. Rachel Reeves has made plenty of money out of being a terrible banker, but she's made plenty of money out of it. They're all on good salaries now. They, they don't seem to realise they should be paying their fair share. Millionaires should be applauded. I always say this because these are the people that start up businesses. These are the people that take risks and they, then they employ people. They give people jobs and the pension contributions, all sorts. Now these people, millionaires, 
forget the non-dons for a second, the millionaires are leaving this country in their droves. And that's just, they're taking with them jobs. They're taking with them opportunities for people. So you can have more people potentially in the doll queue then. And then what? The state's got to pay for them as well. Yeah, and and they're not paying any tax once they leave. No, exactly. Well, no, why should they? This is why I don't have an issue with non-doms. If they've got businesses over here, they're employing people, and they're only paying tax on their UK assets, then fine. I've got no issue with that. Let them pay the tax on their other assets in what other country... Rishi Sunak's wife, for example, she has to pay tax in India on her Indian assets. Fine. I don't care about that. Whatever, as long as she pays tax on whatever she's got in the UK, I don't care. And Labour's manifesto was based on 2% of non-doms getting scared and leaving the country. We've seen up to 14% leave already, with a further 26% now looking to leave the UK in the next six months. All taking with them, I'd imagine, billions of pounds, hundreds if not thousands of jobs, closing down companies and going elsewhere where they can probably employ people for less wages, worse conditions and all the rest of it. So it's a complete non-starter. It's a complete, um, was it? it's, it's just enabling people to be treated more unfairly in other countries when Labour pretend that they're supposed to be the party of working people. Yeah, exactly. And it also means that the exchequer will not be getting the money that they predicted to be getting in from this policy about non-DOM. So the money then they said they're going to spend everywhere else just won't turn up. So how are they going to spend it? They'll still spend it, but it means putting us further in debt. It means putting taxes up somewhere else. Um, but yeah, so let's let's go back to your little question. Do you think this is going to be a, a pathetic budget that has just been like the budgets of the last few years, or do you think they're still going to go hard-hitting? I think they're going to go hard-hitting, and I think they're going to annoy a lot of people. I don't think, they're, honestly, I think they're running out of, uh, but I don't think they care that much what the public think anyway. We've, we've seen the contempt they treat the, the British public with. Um, I think they're going to go hard, and I think they're going to tax people a lot. I think they're going to cost hundreds of thousands of jobs, and it's going to leave us all worse off. The poll ratings are just plummeted anyway. That includes not just the party, but the cabinet ministers themselves, Keir Starmer himself. Maybe they just think, sod it, scorched earth, we're going to go for it anyway, because no one likes us, so we're going to continue with our agenda. And I don't think these people really care that much, their ideologues. They'd rather put themselves or their beliefs before anybody in this country. All they want me and you for is to go to work and pay some tax. And every five years, go and put a cross in a box for me. But they can forget that last one, because that's not going to happen any again. Yeah. Um, we're in a very strange time at the moment, because... In my lifetime, we've never seen a government fall so fast and so low at the beginning of their premiership. We, we just haven't. They haven't done anything yet, and they're this unpopular. This budget, if it is going to be a hard budget, a tax-raising budget, how much further can they fall? I mean, they, 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 they can keep falling, or surely they can. But at some point, the back benches, at some point, other Labour politicians are going, you're going to cost me my position. You know, there's council elections coming up. They're going to do terrible next year. But no, there'll be mayor elections coming up. There'll be by-elections coming up. Politicians only want to get voted in again. And if they can think to themselves, it's this leader. If we can get rid of this leader who's making all these poor decisions, I might get to keep my seat. That's the danger for this government. There's a bit there's a bit of truth to that, I think. Yeah, I mean, is Starmer the sole problem? He's so bland and boring and dull. No, he's not their sole problem. In fact, he's as far as prime ministers go, he's probably the most irrelevant prime minister I've ever seen. He's he's got no beliefs, he's just told what to say, what to do, and half the time he says nothing anyway. So I don't really think getting rid of him would turn their fortunes around. And we all know what would happen if they did get rid of Starmer. It would be Reina that would take over. And I think she'd probably win some sort of leadership contest as well. Because people see her as representing the working class because she talks like an idiot. But that's not how working class people talk or behave what Reina does. They just don't have a clue what working class people are. And, you know, Reina standing at dispatch box every week and saying, well, I grew up on a council estate and so do millions of people. So what? No, nobody cares about that. The... 
you, you're absolutely right about the council elections. They're going to get slaughtered. Will they move on Stormer before then? Obviously, you know, we both said he'd probably be gone by Christmas. I don't know. People might fear Rayner more than they do Starmer because Starmer is so easily manipulated. Whereas Rayner comes from, although she might not say it all the time, she comes from the hard left of the party. She's a Corbynite. You know, she. we would end up with that Corbyn-style policies, really. And I think that that would frighten Labour backbenchers more than just leaving someone who's dull as ditch water like Starmer there for the time being. But there will come a point, you're absolutely right, where these backbenchers, you know, it's squeaky bum time, they're going to start getting scared about their seats. Probably not for a couple of years because, you know, they don't have to worry about a general election yet, do they? But there will there'll definitely come a time and the council elections will definitely accelerate people's minds, won't it? It'll make them think, God, I'm going to, I'm going to be a one-term MP here. There's no way I'm staying. Yeah. I think if it is a soft budget, I think Starman might survive into the new year. If it's a hard budget, which we're expecting and have been prepped for, that might be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, depending on the outrage, depending on the fall in the pounds, depending on interest rates then shooting up because businesses are leaving. So the, there's a lot playing on this budget. This is really the first big decision this government's going to make. And it's hard to believe they've already this unpopular and they've not even made any tough decisions yet. This is this is crunch time next week. Well, look, look at the damage. It's funny you say that. They've, they've done nothing. The one thing they have announced is they're going to take the winter fuel, amount, uh, winter fuel allowance off pensioners. And that one policy has been enough to drag them into the mire, along with other things, of course, as well. But that that one really killed them. I guarantee you now, if they got in, if they won the election tomorrow, they would never announce that again for a saving of a pitiful one point four billion quid, which is nothing. That they would never announce that ever again. But they was too stubborn to go back on it. If they'd have gone back on it and said, "God, that was a cock up. Sorry about that. We didn't mean it." Did it? It would have, it would have been forgotten about by now. But they were too stubborn to go back on it, and that is what's killed them. And what's to say that Reeves isn't telling everyone, right, we need to do this, this, and this. We need to bring in loads of tax rises, etc., because she wants to be the next leader herself. You know, I, Starmer wouldn't be hard to get rid of. It's just doing it at the right time. Yeah, of course, of course. And did you see the NHS come out with their figures about what they predicted the cancellation of the winter fuel allowance is going to mean for them? They reckon it's going to cost them three hundred thousand, no, sort of three hundred million extra a year because of that cancellation. Dealing with people with hypothermia, old people, so that one point four million now billion savings has now dropped down to one billion. Not to mention the pension credits that people can also claim for. It's just that's a complete con though because you've got to fill out is it two hundred forty a two hundred forty six question survey to claim it. But it was worked out by some someone much smarter than me that um, if every pensioner who's entitled to that claim date, it basically wipes out the 1.4 billion anyway. And the amount of pensioners that are coming forward now to claim it is a lot. And basically relatives are just helping them out, aren't they, trying to fill these forms out? Who wants to sit there for a 240-odd question survey out? Good God. Well, that's why they're rushing through now the um, euthanasia bill, because... The, they need these old people to go. You know, they thought they were going to freeze them to death, but now people are helping them fill the forms out. Well, no, no, we, we need to get their family now to talk them into killing themselves so they can get the house and the savings. So the, the, it's everything they're doing is absolutely horrendous. It's going to be a free vote, isn't it, in Parliament? I think, uh, is it Shabana Mahmood, the Justice Secretary, so-called? She's um, She's come out and said she's going to vote against it. Uh, I myself, it's a very contentious issue, isn't it? I mean, I, I'm against it myself. You should not be allowed to take your own life, certainly not legally. I, ca I can see both sides of it. I can see, you know, people like Esther Ranson, you've brought this forward in the first place, who are going to die pretty soon. I can kind of get it a little bit. But if you look at some examples from places like Canada that brought it in, you've got people phoning hotlines up, they're equivalent of the Samaritans or something, and they're saying, oh, you know, I'm really depressed and all this, and they're actually being offered suicide on the state because they're feeling a bit depressed or something like that. This is a dangerous bill. And I would say, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a mad Christian, but I am a Christian. And it's also a sin against God to take your own life. The one sin God won't forgive is suicide. I think it's, 
it, it, it's just not something that should be voted through. But sadly, I think I'm in the minority and I think it will go through. I hope it doesn't go through. And my main reason why I don't want it to go through is because the state can run nothing. They're incompetent at every department. They, you know, they run, they can't keep our borders closed. They can't reduce crime. They, they, they do nothing well. And we're going to give them the, the power over life and death of people who are ill, sick, mentally ill. We're, we're going to allow them to end their lives for them. This is wide open to abuse and, you know, wide open for incompetence. This is a major national disaster waiting to happen. Not, not just the politicians. I've, you're absolutely right about them, by the way. They couldn't run a bath, but not just that. How many relatives? Not everyone's got a nice family. It's, you know, somebody might not get on with their dad and they see him deteriorating because they're the only child or something. They end up with power of attorney. All of a sudden, oh, he told me last night he wants to die, but he can't speak for himself or something. I, you know, you, you really don't know. That, as you say, it's completely open to abuse and it will happen. I guarantee you it will happen because not everyone gives a toss about their mum or their dad or anything like that, do they? Yeah, if you want to end your life, there's lots of ways for you to end your life. We, we we don't need it to be sanctioned by the state. I want the state out of our lives, not inviting them into different parts of our lives. Was rather uh, controversially, I said this. I, I think there's a culling going on. I, I know it's, like it's an extremist conspiracy theory, not just the elderly, but look at that um, the, the, the drug room in Glasgow they're trying to bring out. You're actually encouraging... Um, users of heroin or cocaine, whatever it may be, to go in there and take the stuff. Given that Scotland has the biggest drug deaths in, in Europe, is this a way of just thinking, you know what, they're just a pain in the arse. Just let them go and do it. Let them kill themselves. I know that's extreme, but that's what I think's happening. I've been thinking about this with the old people, and I think you may be onto something with the old people, because if you're a socialist, the states come first. Everything you do is about improving the state, working for the state, giving the state money. The state's everything. State, the state is God, king, everything. Once you get old, you're no longer valuable to the state. In fact, you're a drain on the state. You don't improve the state anymore now. You take and take and take. And I think somewhere in socialist indoctrination, they're looking at old people as a drain, as a negative, and our socialist utopia will be better and we'll get there quicker if all these hang, hang, hanging ons have all gone because they're just a drain on the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vast majority probably don't work or anything like that. Like you said, pensioners are no longer useful. All they're doing is taking money out of the state pension pot, which doesn't exist, which is borrowing money anyway. Yeah, that's exactly how they look at it. And it's... Who do you think's broken the NHS? Old people. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing to do with the government. So can't do, can't get social care together. Yeah, who are the people who are using their cars for short journeys to go to the shops because they can't walk? Old people. It's they're blaming old people for everything, and if they can get rid of them, they save a fortune. Yeah, who votes Tory? Old, old people. people. Who voted yeah. Brexit? Old, old people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not true, but that's the way these people see it. Yeah, yeah, they're getting rid of all the political opponents. But did you see? I don't know how much time we've got left. Did you see um, the abuse that Isabel Oakeshott got on Talk TV for saying that that Peter Lynch was a political prisoner? No, but I've been saying it for for I've been saying it for for quite a while. Yeah, she said he's probably the first political prisoner in a long, long time in this country, and I think that we're seeing a lot more of that. There's a lot of people inside them prisons now that were just writing silly things on Facebook, etc. And there's a lot of paedophiles walking our streets, robbers, people who've committed sexual assaults, etc., walking our streets at the expense of locking up some people who said something stupid on Facebook. And that's the kind of state we're living in now that was once a free country. I totally agree. Half those people who were locked up are political prisoners. Half of them were violent thugs. They needed dealing with and locking up, possibly. But half of them did not need to end up in court and did not need to end up in jail. And his death is is on this government. And we all should be ashamed that we're turning into Soviet Russia, where political dissidents, people you don't like, people are saying things you don't like, we can lock up and basically allow them to kill themselves. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it is completely 1984, isn't it? it it's just... I knew they'd be bad, but I didn't think it would be quite this bad. I didn't think they were so driven with hate 
to lock people up. Even people like this, that that Peter Lynch was 61, wasn't he? I know there's a grandma in prison as well who's in her late 50s. She's also rotting away in a cell now. As I said, you know, I saw the article in the sun, 30 paedophiles in two weeks walked free from prison, including Hugh Edwards, who I believe was tried by the same judge that sent Peter Lynch down. So he allowed he put a granddad away and called him a disgrace a disgraceful example of a grandfather. I think that's what you said to him in court. Yet he allowed Hugh Edwards, a man who had God knows how many disgusting images, to walk free. That's the sort of country we're in now. Pedophiles are actually treated better than just normal citizens who might be concerned about something and said something a bit stupid. And the reason that is happening is because pedophiles are not a threat to the government. Pedophiles do not bring down regimes. Pedophiles do not bring revolutions. Pedophiles do not change governments. But citizens on the street shouting, they can change lots of things and bring other people with them. So the government went, we need to clamp down on this. We're not going to let these pedophiles babysit our kids. So they can't affect us, but we can't have citizens shouting on the streets about how bad we are and about immigration because we don't know where that's going to lead. So let's lock them up. Hence why I call them political prisoners, because that's exactly what happened and why they got locked up. Well, just on that topic, right, this, I've just seen a story before before I came on here. I've just got it in front of me now. This is a guy called Graham Dickey in Scotland. He's 67 years old from Kirkcaldy. He's He was caught with 100,000, as it says, sick images of children, 63 hours of videos, and a price list for child sexual abuse images and a paedophile's instruction manual. How long do you think he served in prison? Suspended sentence. He's got a curfew. That, that's it. You're giving, a, you're giving a guy, a guy that sits in his house watching this stuff, a curfew. A curf- you might as well say, just carry on. So the curfew will be at night. When, seven, seven, won't it, yeah. When, when kids aren't out. But yeah, it's but yeah. free. It's free during the day when kids are out playing. Makes no yeah. bloody sense. Yeah. And where's he been committing these crimes? How's he acquired this stuff? In his house, on his computer or something. I know he won't have the internet anymore. Fine. Yeah. But that's not going to stop these people doing stuff like that. He should be in a cell and he should be rotting away, in my opinion. He should throw away the key for people like that. And but. there's no deterrent for anybody else. We've, we've lost the ability to send out deterrents across the nation where you might have paedophilic thoughts and you might go, I'd like to download some stuff, but do you know what? Do you remember what happened to, to that guy? He got four years in jail. He, he got whipped 92 times. His back is, is cut to pieces and he's been assaulted nine times now in jail. Do you know what? I'm going to leave those pictures alone. That's a deterrent in society. Um, but there is no deterrent for anything anymore now. We treat our criminals as if they're victims, part victims. Has to stop. But I, um, what was I looking at? Oh, yeah, I, was, I did a video on these people that got put away for rioting. First of all, they should never have pled guilty. They should have just fought it because that's a stupid thing to do. But what they should have done is make the punishment fit the crime. They don't have to go to prison. So if some idiot has smashed a police car window, then make him for the next 12 to 24 months, every single Saturday for 24 months, he's got to be at some police station cleaning the cars until they're absolutely gleaming. You know, if if someone's done something stupid like looting a shop, like that guy who got sent down for looting, make him go to that shop and every single Saturday before the shop opens, he's got to clean that shop floor until it's gleaming. Clean it with a toothbrush, if that's how annoying it has to be for him. But make the punishments fit the crimes. It'd be such a better way to do it. Because half of them go into prison as normal people, or it might be a bit stupid, but they, you know, normal people, and they come out with a criminal education anyway. It just gets worse. I'm probably a little bit tougher on crime than you. If you're smashing up a police car, jail's a good enough place for you. If you're looting shops, jail's a good enough place for you. I have the issue where it's people on Facebook. I've got issues where it's that old guy. All he was doing was screaming and shouting at the police in a demonstration. They're the ones I'm thinking never should be near a jail cell. But um, I'd like I'd like to lock more people up in this country. We need to build more prisons, though. But I'd like to lock more people up. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally against that. I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, they're complaining that the prisons are full. So what they're doing is like this guy's an idiot for looting. Fine, but 
Oh, smashing a police car window. Yeah, you're a moron. But does it does it warrant a few years in prison potentially? But does it also warrant releasing sick people that have been out there and assaulted people or rapists and that to put these people in there? Not in my opinion. So I would make if there's no room in the prisons, then make the punishment a bad one and make it make it so crap. Make them shovel shit if you have to somewhere. I don't care, but make it a crap punishment so that they think, God, I don't want to do that again. It was backbreaking work or it was horrible, you know. We could free up 10,000 places in our prisons tomorrow if we deported all foreign nationals who we locked up already. There's 10,000 foreign nationals in our jails um, and 99% of them will never be deported. Let's just deport them all. There's 10,000 places. Yeah, exactly. And what was, was the guy recently, where was he from? Was it Albania? Said they couldn't send him back because he's... Um, it's not good for his mental health or something. I couldn't give a shit about his mental health. I don't. I do not care. And he was filmed. That's the guy. The guy who's filmed in a Jaguar or a Bentley, I think, a brand new car. He's got, he's got all the money he could possibly want. They're laughing at us because we're fools led by idiots. I've just worked out. You know how much that is? Ten thousand criminals. I, I think each prisoner in this country costs about fifty grand to keep behind bars for a year. So it's, that's about five hundred million quid ish they're costing this country every single year and then like you said they'll get out they won't be deported they'll get out and they'll just carry on with what they were doing before and if they go down for a few more years afterwards well so be it yeah career criminals it's, it's part of the job that i'll do so i'll do i'll do a few years inside every now and again if i'm unlucky most criminals are never caught right ash let's leave it there for people watching go into the description You'll find a link to Ash's new YouTube channel because he's the one got hacked. He lost everything, so he's building up his this new channel. So go click it, subscribe, and you'll get half a dozen daily videos off Ash, and you'll enjoy it. So make sure you do that. And for you, Ash, let's catch up in a couple of weeks. Um, and I wish you the best luck in the world of building that channel back up. It is it's a hard task, but I'm sure you'll do it. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Did you enjoy that video? I think you did. Come on now, hit that bell, subscribe, comment. Let's build this channel. I need more followers. I need more subscribers. Be part of the journey. See you soon.